I'm, I'm starting recording. Uh, you have the floor, Chris. Uh, is it <clears throat> that you uh, that you make me the uh, presenter, or may I? Uh, no, I'm the presenter. You tell me when okay. to flip the slides. Okay, you're perfect. Great. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Uh, Susanna said thanks for joining us uh, again. For I, I know maybe some may have been on the Tuesday call, but um, again, we're gonna talk about uh, some products that that we've had, you know, for some time now, but also stuff that that was gonna be the uh, the key products to present at NAB. But in light of what's happening with the coronavirus, uh, we're basically taking this approach and trying to still, you know, be connected with our partners, uh, you know, giving you guys all the details, information. So uh, with that, let me start by uh, quickly just, uh, you know. Uh, reviewing some of the products that we have here. Um, I think some of you guys are very familiar with these products already, you know, with our, uh, you know, different offering solutions that we have, uh, ranging from the uh, standalone uh, BBG 1000 platform, uh, the Open Your Frame, the uh, Throw Down BBG uh, Blue Box uh, items, and then also the server, uh, you know, platform that we use for the uh, uh, for the transport stream analysis and uh, and audio, uh, uh, I guess normalization. So these are these are basically the essence of, of what we have. And then obviously dashboard is the uh, the front end that controls the all the uh, the hardware that we offer uh, within the Open Gear platform. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Um, again, this is more of a review. This is uh, covering uh, different uh, stream options that we have uh, within Open Gear. Uh, the top one, that's our HBF 9000. This product is, is a product that's 100% designed um, and sold only through Cobalt. Uh, the bottom frame, the OGX, this is a frame that's shared throughout you know, all the Open Gear partners. Uh, if anybody sees the frame out in the field that looks like this, uh, the only difference that you might see is basically just a different branding. But in, in general, this is a frame that's shared within all the Open Gear partners, and it's it's one that you can buy through Cobalt or through anybody else. Uh, but again, just wanted to um, present just so you know what's what's out there. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and then this this. Uh, you know, as we mentioned, frames. So this brings us to the new frame. Uh, this is basically our frame. Um, it's it's really a standalone. It looks like the BBQ 1000. It is, uh, you know, about the same footprint, uh, with the exception that this this is a more robust. It has a lot more bells and whistles. It actually has, uh, you know, it's got built-in redundant power. Um, it's got more of the advanced, uh, you know, uh, network control like SNMP. Um, and, and all the uh, configuration options that you would get on the HPF or OGX frame. Um, it also, as you can see there, it, it has it has a very modular design where you can open the front panel. And that front panel allows you to basically open it up and be able to swap out any card that, that you have uh, within Open Gear. But we've been actually having this uh, discussion that, you know, it's it's really, you know, you need to be careful which cards are, are you know, intended to be used in this frame because of the uh, placement inside of the frame. Uh, so whether you have an odd or even, uh, you know, backplane uh, configuration, you would need to basically check with your sales uh, manager or the factory just to make sure that it would actually fit into this uh, enclosure. Um, and then that, that would also be the same, uh, you know, recommendation if you want to use uh, a third-party open gear card. Uh, but in general, this this frame sort of addresses a lot of the needs and requests from the market. In, and primarily, uh, one of the key uh, aspects of this uh, design was to address the need for a standalone compression encoder decoder, uh, you know, solution. So this uh, easily does that. And now that we're talking about different protocols, uh, it also addresses you know the ability to to manage uh, any protocol property with this. Again, this is a new uh, BBG 1300 frame, and uh, and at some point, you know, when we uh, send out the new price list, uh, you know, you'll see it listed on there, and you'll see what options and how to configure. So, again, this is uh, relatively new, and this was actually going to be on location at NEB, but uh, it's just unfortunate that that was not the case. But if you do want to demo this, uh, make sure to uh, send us an email or a call, and we'll see if we can help you with that. Okay, next slide. 
uh, just uh, before we move off of this, I want to highlight the point that this is just like a frame and will take cards from pretty much any vendor. As long as you can fit in there, the, uh, it will work. It's, it's a generic thing. Uh, yeah, and, and you get the redundant power, so that's a key uh, aspect to that. Okay, next one. And this is this is a, a uh, it's a new uh, solution that we have. We actually had a, a previous model called the 9914. Now, once we uh, added a little more uh, functionality and, and beefed up the design, uh, it sort of became the 9915DA. This is uh, we can almost say this is going to be like our our next you know flagship sort of DA product. Uh, it has a lot of uh, you know density built into this. Um, you can process anywhere from NSC all the way up to 12G. It also has uh, the ability to, uh, as you can see there, with the cross point uh, using SFPs, you can essentially have uh, fiber in and out. Um, so again, with an SFP, you essentially have a more robust, uh, flexible platform that allows you to have, uh, you know, these configurations like a one by 16, two by 16, or four by 16. And again, it's one car, but you will need to define exactly what the model is that you intend to um, uh, purchase so that uh, based on that, you would have a certain set of uh, options and configuration options. Uh, but again, the cross point that we have uh, built into the car also gives you that flexibility and you'll see visually what's available and what's not in terms of your inputs and outputs. Uh, can you go to the next slide, sir? And this is basically a screenshot of the way the cross points look. Uh, when you look at the uh, the cross points, you see what's available, what's not. And uh, and then again, on the far right side, you'll see that there's some SFP uh, uh, options there. If you have the SFPs, you'll see them live. If not, then it'll be just basically, uh, you know, it's it's a red S, as you can see there. Um, again, next slide, sir. And this is another representation as you know, if you would have. Hello. <laughs> okay. I guess somebody was asking a question. Um, anyways. Um, so yeah, so this is again, another screenshot representing what, uh, what's possible once you have the card, how you can go into dashboard and how you can manage and configure your cross point for the for the 12 GDA card. Um, and above all, what's really nice about this card is that it's very dense and you can basically manage uh, multiple uh, you know, signals uh, in a very small footprint, um, which nowadays makes a lot of sense if you're trying to get a little fly pack or a small little master control uh, going, this is a nice way to address that. Next slide, Cyril. Uh, this, uh, we, we uh, in a way, we're sort of like very proud of this little guy because it, it shares a lot of the characteristics and features of the 9915. Uh, it basically has, uh, you know, the same quality, same robustness uh, in terms of signal uh, performance, um, but in a smaller package. And obviously because, you know, given the size that it's a small little throw down little box, uh, we're only able to put so much into this. But you know, the quality and the functionality is the same as the bigger car that we just talked about. Uh, with this one, uh, if you can see there in the middle, uh, these little boxes have a, a thing called, you know, it's the, the BBG config uh, software that if you plug it in with, uh, you know, a, a USB to your PC, you automatically have this uh, sort of uh, software that allows you to configure and monitor some of these little boxes. In this case, uh, this DA, this one by six, 12G DA, has the ability to have an eye pattern. And this eye pattern uh, basically gives you a reference, uh, you know, uh, more like a little snapshot of what's going on with the inbound signal, right? So in some cases, I've seen some people actually use this to basically go into their facility with the laptop and they're just, you know, going through the patch panel and just looking at, see, you know, to see what this inbound signal looks like. So again, you get this, uh, in a small little box, it's less than $400. And with the added benefit of this, you know, reference eye pattern uh, functionality that in most cases, you would basically pay up to $20,000 for like a Lira or Tektronix scope, right? So now you get this, it's it's part of a package, there's no options. And, you know, again, it, it carries the same uh, quality and robustness as the card. So again, this is an option and, 
And, and this is part of, again, the, the BVG, uh, you know, lineup of products. Next slide, sir. Next. Uh, and again, um, you can go to the next one. This is, again, addressing uh, more the, uh, uh, if you look at this, this is basically a complete list of what we have right now in terms of the uh, little throwdown BVG boxes. Uh, one thing that I want to stress is that uh, these products are all basically manufactured in the U.S. and they all carry a uh, warranty of five years. Um, in most cases, uh, you know, the product lives a warranty. And what's good about the warranty is that we don't, you know, like other manufacturers, we don't basically try to, you know, just, you know, troubleshoot the, the product. You know, we basically take the product back if it fails in the field and then we send you a replacement just to kind of mitigate and reduce the time of, of waiting around for a replacement. Uh, so this is one of the things that that was pointed um, or that was basically suggested by you know upper management to try to help you know relieve the pain and, and improve the the experience of the user. Uh, and within this this product line, we have basically from um, you know basically uh, electrical to optical, optical to electrical, uh, single channel, two channel, uh, transceiver, so bidirectional. Uh, HDMI to fiber, fiber to HDMI, uh, and then we have an SFP a transceiver configurable uh, box that can be used with any SFP module. And then we also have a solution to encapsulate, the encapsulate 2110 or 2022, uh, which is a quite popular product that some manufacturers actually purchase this. And then we have a solution for embedding, de embedding um, audios in uh, analog and ABS. And uh, and then obviously your typical uh, SDI to HDMI to SDI and our uh, distribution amplifier. Somebody ask a question? No. Okay, have, uh, 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 Chris, is that you? You're talking right now, Chris? Yes. Definitely. Yes. Okay, Chris. Uh, sorry for interrupting. Quick question. But looking at the picture of uh, you know that we're looking at right now, do you know uh, rec mount? Is that the only way that you can uh, mount these uh, uh, mini converters? Like, you know, the way it is shown in this picture, is that the only way? Uh, no, this is one example. I mean, basically this is, uh, if you look at the top one, I mean, the first one, right, is they're vertical, right? That's a one vertical uh, way to mount, but we can also put them horizontal. Right. Oh, okay, well, okay, yeah, because, <laughs> I would yeah, say are... in order for for a customer to uh, accommodate uh, most of these converters, probably vertical will be the easiest way. So you, up to how many of those you can accommodate in a, uh, in a rack so unit? Per, per vertical, so if you look at one of those little slides, uh, you can have up to, I believe it's uh, four per like vertical. And then if you have uh, basically horizontal, you can put up to two uh, because of the wiring cabling. Uh, and that's, uh, but I believe okay. you can also push up to maybe six more if it's vertical, but it's going to be very tight. Okay, thank you. Great, these are, yeah, these are configurations that if you need, uh, if somebody asks for something like that, you know, we can help, you know, the customer or, or the user, uh, you know, sort of identify the best configuration method, you know, just to make sure that we have proper you know, that it doesn't get too crowded and that the cabling doesn't get like, you know, snagged or bent or anything like that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next slide. <clears throat> Sorry, next. Uh, and then this brings us to our, uh, our basically our routing platform for open gear. I think we are the only ones that, that offers this in an open gear uh, platform. It's basically an open gear car with the back plane. Uh, what is nice about this is that it basically uh, provides a lot of the functionality and features that some of the big guys offer, right? So we have a lot of the popular, you know, um, controls, uh, you know, protocols. Uh, we can also support TSL. And, uh, and what's nice about this is that the density uh, allows for a nice uh, combination with multi-viewer and other processing uh, cards within an open gear frame. Uh, last year and years before, we only had a solution that was, uh, you know, you had to select either a 3G or 12G. And depending on what uh, sort of, uh, you know, if it was 3G or 12G, you only had a certain uh, configuration option. Now, this card does from anywhere from SD all the way through 12G. 
And uh, we offer these two models, which are 12 by 12 and 24 by 24. Uh, before we had a uh, only the 12G option as a 4 by 12. Now we basically said, okay, let's just open it up and just let the user, you know, be able to have that whole range, you know, from anywhere from SE through 12G and the best configuration possible. So again, it's still a thin card, one card, and and depending on the backbone that you have, um, that's going to give you the I/O, you know, uh, in and outs for your uh, configuration. So again, this can be controlled through dashboard. Uh, and by the way, if, if some of you guys are not familiar, we offer a solution called Custom uh, Panel Builder, so that if you're, you know, wanting to use this and be able to manage the rest of the cards in a frame or in a rack, you can use this, right? And then if you if you develop a custom panel uh, sort of configuration, you can have all your cross points, all your uh, tie lines, and all that stuff uh, exposed in in the custom panel along with your audio meters, along with your other processing, uh, you know, cards and be able to have a nice clean solution. But if you want to go the traditional route where you have panels, if you go to the next slide, sir, uh, we have these, these other panels that are proven to work with this router. And, and as you can see there, we play pretty well with the PESA, with Lavo, and the bottom ones are all DNF uh, options. So if some of your customers already have some of these uh, control panels, uh, you can easily adapt them to this card, and that'll just give you that much more flexibility, which is one nice thing about this, that we're not trying to reinvent something else, but rather, you know, kind of adding more value to what you have in, in a given uh, workflow. So, again, this is this our, our taking the, uh, the routing uh, solution, and, and with these uh, controls, you're able to at least manage it or go the custom panel around. Next slide, please. Uh, Chris, Chris, sorry. Uh, can we go back a little bit to the yeah. to the other to the last uh, you know uh, slide? Uh, just real quick. I'm sorry to interrupt, but that, this is it's that's the reason why we're here. Okay? No, this, this um, is so thank you. Don't don't feel bad at all. Yeah, that's okay, Thank you. So thank you, Susanna. Um, real quick question. Uh, on the router control. You're still, you know, mentioning the PESA, you know, protocol. You know, PESA has been out of business for so many years, but I guess on the, in the routing, you know, uh, uh, equipment and, and systems, the PESA protocol remains the same. Uh, it, that's pretty much what it is, right? Uh, yeah, but PESA is still in business. They're, they're not out of business. They're not out of business, PESA? They're still in business. Really? Yeah, I mean, okay. we just talked to them as of yesterday, maybe. I don't know. Somebody at the factory did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, okay. I thought they went out of business, uh, but I know that the PESA protocol has been the standard for years and years. But I mean, it, I mean, well, I mean, that, yeah, that's no, okay. okay. Yeah, but the PESA, one thing about PESA, I mean, as you know them, I mean, that's one of the old brands. And, and traditionally, they've been a very like government, military uh, solution provider. Right, and, mm -hmm. and the government and the military, they chose them because of the robustness and how they design their products. Yeah. Uh, but okay. but they're still around and we happen to, to play with them. We, we do a lot of, you know, collaboration with them. I see. Uh, okay. so, but it's still around, yeah. I mean, if you if you guys have customers that are existing PESA users, I mean, this this solution mm -hmm. that could easily right. get yeah. Thanks, thanks for uh, clarifying this point. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, yeah no problem. Next slide, Zero. Next slide. Okay, and uh, so now this brings us uh, from routing, we go into processing, and this is basically our now the the new sort of flagship product for the uh, you know for the basically multi services processing. In the past, some of you guys uh, might be familiar with the uh, you know our UDX nine nine zero two UDX uh, with the ninety nine twenty two frame sync solution uh those two cards basically offer a lot of flexibility a lot of functionality in terms of uh, you know some of the services with the license option but they were just limited to only 3g or hd and then maybe uh you know some some uh you know basically standards were not part of that or, or some of the new stuff that's coming out like hdr and 2110 was not part of that so because of that this new uh the, this new 4k udx basically kind of took the you know the baton and basically uh you know now carries that the same tradition of having the same flexibility being able to kind of 
define your workflow based on what options you know you want to basically enable on this car because this car when you purchase it and, and and it comes out of the box it already has all the bells and whistles built into it what enables the car to do anything is just basically a license file that opens up that option so if you can look at these blocks that we have here on, on this diagram the small little blocks basically those are the different steps or the different you know processing services that it performs but within some of these blocks you'll see some some blue options and these options are basically things or items that you can enable activating the field they don't this car does not need to go back to the factory to get updated uh, but rather it can be done through a file that enables the service and you know you're able to to quickly you know turn around and continue working on whatever it is that you're working However, one of the, the nice things about this is that uh, because of the flexibility and functionality, we can now do on this a full like, you know, 12G uh, SDI or quad, you know, 3G SDI processing. So we can take it, convert it to either of those flavors or even SD or HD. Um, so this is one of those flexibilities. On top of that, we can also do HDR, so we can do the different, uh, you know, ITM, the Technicolor uh, flavor, but we can also do like a 3D LUT and SLHDR1 encode and decode. So this is again one of those uh, nice functionalities that are, you know, built into this car. So again, it's not a one RE box, but rather it's a car that allows you to have multiple channels in a frame. So now you have more density, more performance uh, that that's available in the market today, right? And then on top of that, because we're basing our uh, HDR algorithm on the Technicolor uh, circuit sauce, uh, now we have a, a, a very you know reliable and confirmed you know uh, true uh, you know quality uh, HDR conversion uh, you know mapping process. So again, this is this is what this car offers, and then it also kind of uh, goes into the the 2110 domain where we can have also that functionality uh, via SFP. And I believe at some point this this SFP is going to be built in into into the FPGA as a core uh, solution offer, you know, based on the uh, uh, the development that we're going to continue to to apply to this. But again, as of now, if you were to purchase this, it comes with all all the uh, functionality and just a license allows you to basically have uh, you know some of those uh, features and controls. Uh, and then one thing that I should also mention is that based on some feedback and, and market sort of analysis that I've I've gotten back from some users, uh, in particular on the West Coast for Cinema and Post, uh, if some of you guys are interested to know, this is the only solution out there that can basically embed and de-embed, uh, you know, up to uh, 16 audio channels of AES and be able to bring in the uh, uh, basically, you know, RGB 444. But at the moment, right now, as, as we speak, this card will basically convert that to a YCBCR 420. So if you if you need to deliver in that, I mean, this is perfect. But if you wanted to keep it as, uh, you know, pristine 444 RGB, it's not going to happen today. But maybe at some point, that's going to be enabled on this card. Uh, but just wanted to throw that out because, you know, some people have asked. And I know that now in the Netflix and, uh, you know, the new basically, uh, you know, players that are out there, you know, with these new streaming services, there's a lot of posts is trying to deliver to them. And uh, at Cobalt, we're working hard to try to make this a standard for those guys. So what that means if, is that those guys become standardized on this gear, other people are gonna be standardized and you guys as partners or users may be also tagged to support those uh, formats uh, and workflows. So uh, if we go to the next slide. And these are basically the uh, the backplane options. Again, continu continuing on the tradition of uh, Cobalt, uh, whenever you have a car, it's not just one backplane. We have different back black, uh, sorry, uh, backplanes uh, that allows you to uh, basically interchange, uh, you know, depending on what you want to have activated on the car. So uh, in the past, we just have the, the very basic, which is the, the backplane that you see on the, on the left side of the, the picture here. Uh, and then we started to develop a more, you know, smaller, more dense uh, backplane uh, for some of those uh, high density uh, required uh, configurations. But then if you go back into having SFPs and audios and multiple channels, then you need to go back into a wire backplane that allows you to manage uh, the SFPs uh, as a TX or RX, and then with the ability to also have an HDMI output. 
Um, I know we also have uh, a module that's that's you know also supporting an HDMI input. Uh, you don't see it here, but that's an option. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Serum. Uh, these are one of these are the options that we have for this car. If you look at the module that I'm talking about, it's the one in the far left bottom. Uh, you'll see HDMI input module. So this is uh, a module that if you also wanted to bring in an HDMI uh, source into this car and convert that to a 12G or quad uh, 3G, you can do that. Uh, and again, this goes along with the tradition of all the other cards where you have uh, you know all these different license options that you can enable. Uh, the middle part, the DSP, that's, you know, if you have the uh, the option, uh, you know, the 9904UDX4K-DSP, uh, that gives you the ability to have uh, real-time loudness uh, controlling, uh, but also the ability to uh, encode and decode Dolby as well, and then do a nub mix, uh, because the nub mix is by default uh, part of the card. And then the, the far right side, these are options if you wanted to adapt you know, the uh, IP2110 uh, you know, in and out, then this will give you that option. Again, the car already has all these uh, you know, supportive features uh, built into the car. Uh, and so basically what that means is that you would just need to enable or, or purchase the license to, to give you that functionality. And then also based on whatever car model you purchase, uh, some of these will apply to that or not. So, you know, you need to make sure that if you plan to do a lot more Dolby, that you purchase the one with the DSP, or if you plan to do like all IP, then you purchase the one with the IP, uh, you know, built-in uh, daughter board. So again, just keep that in mind because these are gonna be what makes uh, the difference in terms of what you get. Uh, but in terms of some of the uh, HDR stuff, you know, some of that, you know, color and cure and logo and all that stuff, that should be covered by the basic, you know, base model. But, you know, again, this is just in case you know that it's it, even though it's the same car, what makes it different is is you know that you have uh, some of these uh, daughter boards that are part of that uh, you know uh, platform. So next slide. And then to illustrate to illustrate what we have in terms of uh, you know a complete uh, you know 12G uh, solution, uh, this diagram sort of illustrates you know how we can go from an ingest all the way through transmission, right? So again, uh, the product that we started discussing, the first uh, one, which uh, was the, the DA, you know, we have that basically, this is a, a, a diagram that's, that's sort of illustrating that we can take a, you know, a DA 12G input, and then we can come out you know, 12G and also fiber. So that's a nice little way to use up my resource. I can, by using the cross point, I can define what destination I wanna go. And then, I'd, and then I can also feed into you know, my multi-viewer and then continue down the path uh, with my routing and then take that signal and further, you know, distribute that even to other locations, uh, including my UDX card that's doing uh, HDR processing. And then finally, uh, going through my encoding uh, HUVC encoder um, and then, uh, you know, doing a, a transmit over to the other side and then on the other side, uh, basically taking it with my HUVC decoder and then again, basically bringing it down to a baseband level and doing some more processing, including uh, audio. So again, you can see that Cobalt doesn't just make small little simple products, but you, we can, you know, quite nicely address a complete uh, 12G uh, and uh, point to point, uh, you know, workflow. So again, this illustrates that and, and, you know, you'll see that this is a theme that we have in most of our products now. So a lot of our products are going to be supporting everywhere from, uh, you know, SD to, uh, you know, 12G. So next slide. And again, this is another um, graphic to illustrate our HDR capability. So we can go from conversion to distribution. And again, utilizing the same products that I just mentioned in the other slide, but just in a slight different, uh, you know, sort of uh, path. But again, going from, uh, you know, ingest through transmission, uh, you know, from processing and coding, and then again, um, you know, when you decode it, process it again, and then normalize it for the region. So, again, this is this is what we can do today, and this is what a lot of our customers were doing with the HD uh, and 3G platforms, and now you know, sort of started doing this with the uh, the 12G and quad 3G uh, solutions that we have. Next slide. And then um, what I mentioned earlier with the uh, the 9904UDX uh, card. 
um, and, and also if you combine that with the uh, BBG 1300 uh, frame, we have now a complete little package that allows you to basically, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are very familiar with the uh, uh, the need to do a 3D LUT processing on set for episodic and cinematic uh, productions. Uh, this is one option that we have now within our car, the 9904 UDX. So in a sense, what this diagram is, is uh, illustrating here is that we can take an S-log uh, or one of the logs from a Sony camera or, or even a Aerie or Panasonic camera, and we can basically bring it into the car and the card using the uh, live grade or wonder look uh, software that you see in the bottom, it allows me to basically take that log and convert that to a LUT file, which is a cube file that's used in post. So basically to give it the same look that the director and the production crew wanted to give when they were on set. So this basically is something that we already offer and we have customers like Panavision, uh, Warner Brothers and Disney that are basically using these, uh, you know, cards and the previous UDX cards uh, to basically perform this sort of uh, function, but in 3G or, or HD. Now with the 12G, we sort of offer that in a, in a more dense package that gives them not just the, the ability to, to do the LUT management, but also the, the up-down cross-conversion uh, as well. So this is, you know, uh, for anybody that understands and wanted to see this, uh, you know, or, or, you know, thinks that this might be of interest for some customers, you know, uh, I would suggest to go out and, and discuss that because this is uh, becoming more and more of an interest uh, area. And I think that, you know, I've seen it for the most part in, in a lot of the Western, uh, you know, states or, or because of, you know, Hollywood and all that. But I think, you know, for some of the other regions uh, in, in uh, South America and, and other places, they're starting to use a lot of these uh, packages for rental and, and, and production. So just keep that in mind. Next slide. And again, continuing on the uh, tradition of the different license options, uh, this diagram illustrates uh, what we can do today in terms of the whole, uh, you know, as we call it here, one-stop broadcast compliance. So from uh, having multiple uh, signal paths to uh, you know, being able to process, you know, text-to-speech, uh, enabling also EAS, and also being able to key and and uh, and fill and, and being able to insert logos, uh, encode, decode, and, and, and adjust the audio levels, uh, embedding, de-embedding, doing all that. These are all things that are might be um, by default part of the product or maybe options. So this is something to consider um, in terms of, you know, what's available and that it's it's the same, the same, uh, you know, way that we license products, but on the on the 12G uh, 4G platform now. Next slide. Now we're going to multi viewers. Next one. <clears throat> and this is our new uh, latest uh, product. That's uh, basically it's it's a very dense. Uh, you know, we carry the the tradition from the 9970, which was our HD 3G uh, only supporting product. Now this covers all that, plus it, it, it gives you the ability to have uh, 12G uh, 18 inputs and then also multiple uh, outputs and uh, two HDMI outs as well. Uh, but if, as you can see there, you can, you can see we have uh, three different model numbers that depending on what you get, uh, you'll have a different configuration. As an example, we have one that's an MV6 4K that has uh, basically you know, six SDI inputs. Uh, and then we have an MV6 4H 4K that has six SDI inputs and then four HDMI input uh, options as well. So you have either of that. And then finally, the, the biggest, most uh, complete one is the 18 SDI input multi-viewer that also gives you the ability to have uh, two um, you know, HDMI outs and then also SDI. Um, and then with this, you have you know, closed captions, uh, you can do retail, UMD, uh, and then also one unique thing about this is that if you have, let's say, HD or 4K, I mean, whatever you feed into that, it's going to stay as that resolution. This does not downscale or downconvert to, a, to a, let's say, an SD or an HD format per pit, but rather it keeps that, that resolution at that particular uh, resolution for whatever pit you want, and it, and it processes everything at 10 bits. So there's a lot of processing going on with each of these uh, uh, cards that, you know, in some cases people compare us to other lesser quality products in the market 
and we have to basically restate that hey you know this is not you know just another you know multivariate but rather it's a highly uh, you know uh, highly processing high dense uh, product that you know keeps the resolution as it is you know for proper monitoring and we offer you know the best controls and features as other products and sometimes some people might you know sort of push back on the price one because it's a little higher but again it's a little higher because of all the processing that we're doing inside of this car uh next slide uh, zero just a quick question go ahead uh, I, I, we have a, a some customers that uh, are asking us about this product if we can have it uh, like alarms uh, like to be monitoring the quality of the signals and then uh, get all these alarms to uh to a system that is monitoring and is reporting and is uh, giving these alarms to the user so let's say that they are like monitoring by exception uh, do you have uh, uh, something in the roadmap for this product like this yes uh we have it in the roadmap for the six input multi viewer um the, it will be similar to the qc option that we have in the 9970 um, unfortunately, we cannot do that in the 80 input because that is that thing is basically too full. But yes, we will have that uh, for the six input, and the uh, the development is ongoing. This is not something that we are planning to do. It's something that we are working on right now. Uh, I just don't re don't recall when the due date for that is, but it's not long. It's it's going to be relatively soon. And I and Terry, just to add to that, I I did give uh, Ryan a whole list of, of for this particular one. It's like part of the idea is to also be able to have multiple GPI, uh, you know, alarms, being able to detect audio changes, uh, loss of audio, and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so I think this is part of, if I'm not mistaken, this is kind of what uh, Mark was asking about. And the customer, it's, it's a customer that has been requesting this because of the previous manufacturer that's no longer supporting some of this. And I've mentioned this in other meetings. Um, but again, it's it's uh, it's along those lines of you know being able to monitor different alarms and GPI triggers and all that. Yeah, and basically uh, what uh, what you're saying is Miranda used to do that, and of course Grass Valley uh, still have it but uh, it is a very expensive solution so that, that's what they are looking for a less expensive solution uh, you know multi viewers there are uh, a lot of different brands and very inexpensive ones but they would like to have this uh, quality control measurement so that, i think that's a a good opportunity and uh, to fit to fit some of the customers expectations because they don't have uh, too much solutions that do that today yes we thank you we understand that and we're working on it um i'm gonna make sure that uh some sort of spec sheet comes out before the product the, before the product so that you you know what's coming thank you okay and uh <clears throat> yeah so this is this is the block diagram for that uh, we're showing in this block diagram the uh 18 um, uh input configuration uh, multi viewer, and as you can see, there's there's uh, you know some of the controls like GPI, Ethernet, uh, you know some of the tally controls. Um, so a lot of this is already built in. As Cyril said, you know it just uh, depends on which one because of the high you know uh, pro or the processing capacity of each card. So some uh, may have to be basically scaled back, like in terms of the inputs, uh, to be able to give you more uh, functionality. But if you want a more basic, yeah, just monitoring with uh, UMDs, uh, tally, and closed captions, then you know the 18 input might be good enough. But again, we are addressing and looking at different use cases uh, because we're getting a lot of feedback from some of these big, uh, you know, uh, multi viewer users like the Eberts or Miranda or others, right? So. But we are going to be uh, enhancing, and we do have a lot of uh, you know things that are in the pipeline that might be addressing some of the requests. So uh, if you go if you go on YouTube and look for either IBC 2019 and or uh, Vitrans 2020 wrist demos, um, you're going to see a mosaic with all kinds of videos. It was done on this multi viewer with a very nice overlay. So it's a it's a visual example of it in action. Why you, yeah, you, you, you okay? Uh, next slide. 
this is your your section. And that's my turn. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. All right. So as you well know, uh, Cobalt has got um, encoders and decoders, and uh, we now have 4K HVC 8-bit, 10-bit encoders and decoders. It's our 9992 encoder and your, our 9992 decoder. With, uh, and they continue the tradition of the other Cobalt encoders that um, have, uh, have support for both uh, ASI and um, and, and networking, uh, sorry, and, and uh, multiple multiple types of network protocols. So um, starting with the uh, encoder, the 4K encoder, um, this has been shipping for a year now. Uh, just like the other Cobalt, Cobalt products, is sort of a software-enabled pla platform where um, you have a, a relatively low cost of entry and then you add features to it. So the base model is an HD encoder with MPEG-2 and 264 support. And then you can uh, license it for more channels. You can license it for 422 and you can license it for HVC and 4K. So um, it starts small, but as you need features, it, it goes up, right? Um, the other difference between this encoder and our previous line of encoders is this one has got a very, very rich audio support. So it does pretty much anything you want. Uh, MPEG-1 Layer 2, AAC all, all modes, and Dolby AC3 and EAC3. And the, the other nice thing is that uh, it's sort of a credits-based license where the, the audio channels float, and you assign them as you want to encoder channels. So um, just like our other encoder lines, it's got a, a very rich ancillary data support to it, and that's always include for, included for free. 10-bit uh, encoding is included in the base unit, and uh, a whole bunch of network protocols. So uh, here's the uh, licensing model. So the base model is the little uh, red square is you get one, one, one encoder, one HD with two channels of either MPEG-1 layer 2 or AAC. And then you, you, you add it up. And if you, want the, if you buy the 4K version, then that can do uh, eight stereo pairs and it, it can do uh, the four AVCs or, or HVCs. The, the other thing that's interesting about this, people have been asking during this week, is surround support. Yes, we can do Adobe 5.1, and that's a separate license. But if you don't want to spend the money for Adobe 5.1, and you're happy with uh, AAC, or if you're streaming somewhere where they, they take AAC, we do AAC uh, 5.1 as well. There's no separate license for that. Since AAC 5.1 is like six, uh, three stereo pairs, uh, if you have three three licenses of the AAC, you can you can use those three to become a, a surround channel, and and you don't even need to call us. You just have those licenses, you configure the encoder, they will take three licenses, and there you go. So it's it's very very flexible. Um, licenses for 422, 2022 FAC, and uh, RIST are per, per unit per board. So you put it in the board, and then everything is available. You can you can mix and match. Uh, everything. The only thing you can't mix and match is the encoding standard. All the channels have to be in the same standard, either MPEG-2, 264, or HVC. And in 264 and HVC, we do 4K. Again, the example I, I, I told you about the, of the multi-viewer and YouTube, uh, um, it's a 4K thing, and it was generated on one of these. We, we can uh, stream 4K real-time to YouTube using this board. The counterpoint to it is the decoder, and you see the board looks a lot like the encoder because it's essentially the same same thing, right? The decoder is um, either a dual HD or a 4K uh, decoder. Um, the audio support is the same. It's the same kind of idea. You have the audio decoders. They float. You assign them as you want. Um, the In, in the I.O. panel, you have... Uh, both 
you have two 12G outputs and you have a number of uh, S SDI out outputs um, and a little built-in DA. So for anything you have, you have a copy too. Um, so if, you, if, for example, you're doing just one HD out of this thing, okay, I have eight copies of it. If you're then doing two HDs, you have a little video router where uh, you decide what every pin does. For every pin, there is a there is a copy. So it's, it's also got some low latency modes that the other ones didn't have. The the licensing is is very similar to the to the encoder. You have per unit licenses, which are the orange things in uh, in the right. Uh, you can uh, license it for Fortune 2, you can license it for FAC, and you, you can license it for RIST. Uh, the audio, again, is floating. So as you as you put more licenses, you can assign them. And since this thing can do um, 16 pairs, uh, then you can fill two HDs. I see there is, uh, okay. I was looking at the, the chat or something. Um, all right. So it's, as I said, it's very flexible, very flexible. And uh, it's uh, just like the encoder is a pay as you go thing and where you, you have a relatively low uh, entry cost and then you, you add to this thing. Now, this is not the cheapest decoder in the world because it's very feature rich. So um, it, it does, does cost a little bit more and costs more than the 9990, but you have a lot more features on it. Okay. Um, this is a, a little example um, I wanted to give about uh, combining the two products, the 9904 UDX 4K and the encoder decoder. To, to do a SLHDR1 transport. This is showing how the technology all plays together. Um, so SLHDR1, if you're not familiar with it, it's a method by, by which you take an HDR signal, full HDR signal, PQ, PQ, PQ10 encoded, and you convert that to an SDR signal plus metadata that, is allow, that allows you to uh, convert it back to HDR. So that signal, if you plug it to something that's just SDR, it will work just fine because that thing doesn't know what to do with the metadata. It, if it is an HDR monitor or an HDR device, it will show you HDR. And there's two representations of that. Uh, 702108 is the one, uh, the way to do that on the SDI world with ancillary data. That's what our 9904 UDX 4K does. And the encoder knows how to deal with that and converts that metadata into uh, what's called an, a say message, a stream enhancement information message inside the video bitstream uh, and transmits it too. So the same thing happens in the compressed bitstream. If, if uh, you, you feed that to something that doesn't know what HDR is, it will just play the SDR. If you feed that on something that knows what it is, it will play the HDR. And we can do the, the reverse process in our decoder. Um, the decoder will, will generate the SDI with 2108, and then the, the 9904 UDX4K can give you back a, a, a PQ signal. So we have it end-to-end -end now, uh, both in the, in the baseband domain and in the compressed domain. Um, we've been talking and making mentions about uh, RIST, uh, Reliable Internet Stream Transport. Um, that's a, a, a protocol, a specification from the Video Services Forum, um, which is the, the intention is to use the internet as a low cost, low latency contribution uh, option for you. Now you can tell me, uh, yeah, people have been selling that for years. Yes, people have been selling that for years. What's new is the fact that we all got together and we, we are playing nice. So you can mix and match equipment from different vendors. And that, that is really the, uh, the value proposition of RIST. Yes, you can get it from Cobalt, and we hope you get it from Cobalt. But if, if there's something else on the other side that Cobalt doesn't make, you can get it from some other vendor too, and we will talk to that. So th that's the nice thing, the nice thing about RIST. Um, all of our encoders and decoders of every, uh, every age support this. And you can you can definitely mix and match, and we we work very hard with other vendors to ensure interoperability. 
um, Cobalt is really active in the in the specification. I'm actually the editor of the risk specification. So if you don't, if you have uh, legacy stuff or legacy equipment that doesn't do rest, uh, we have the SafeLink gateway. You see uh, the hardware. You, you, you certainly see it looks uh, it's, it's our um, Open Gear PC or OGPC. It's a software load on top of that. And it's the same code that we have in the encoders and decoders. Uh, and it, it just does conversion from a network stream that doesn't have wrist to a network stream that has wrist and vice versa. So this is a, this is a gateway to uh, allow devices that you may have or from third parties or even from Cobalt itself that don't do wrist to add wrist to them. And uh, we, uh, for the people in, in Brazil and South America, uh, we have an update uh, re recently. This is now compatible with the BTS. If you have a BTS over IP, it knows how to handle that. Um, I would like to talk to you about something that's coming up. It's uh, one of the new things that we were going to talk about at uh, NAB, which is uh, risk main profile. So uh, risk simple profile is what we've been selling up to now. Risk simple profile takes care of the reliability of transmitting stuff over the internet. You, you lost a packet, you get a packet back. That's the diagram that we had before. Now, that's all fine and that works very, very well, but there is more to transmitting stuff over the internet. And so that's what risk main profile is adding. It's adding tunneling where you can combine multiple streams into one UDP port and you can open the firewall on either side with simple profile. The receiving side, that's the guys, that's the IT department that has to open the firewall. With tunneling, you do what is convenient for you and it's only one port regardless of how many streams you're going. The other big one is encryption. You're transmitting stuff over the internet. There is content that you may be contractually obliged to encrypt. If it's outside your network, and if it's valuable content, you cannot just send it over the internet and let anybody see it. You gotta encrypt that. So risk main profile adds encryption and uh, it's top of the line encryption is the same kind of encryption that you're gonna get if you use uh, if you're connecting to your bank over the internet. It's two, it's uh, 256 AES if you want that with elliptic curve. Um, there's some some places in the world where that's not legal. So we also support 128 if you want to uh, configure that. Um, and the final thing that's also very important in a, a risk main profile is authentication. It's again the same type of infrastructure that when you connect to your bank, you are sure that you're actually connecting to the bank and not someone pretending to be the bank. Authentication is important because you need to know who you're talking to. Or if someone is connecting to you, you need to know who is coming. So, for example, if you have a bunch of reporters in the field that are going to upload video to you, you want to know that it's indeed the reporter and not someone who just found, oh, yeah, that, that port is open and they're waiting for a stream. Let me push my stream instead of theirs. No, that's not going to happen anymore. Authentication is now available for, for RIST. So this is uh, how we're going to support in, the, in the, uh, our uh, product line. The legacy 9223 encoder is going to get tunneling. It's actually available already uh, in, in better format if you want to try it. Um, the, nine, the legacy 9990 decoder is going to get everything. And uh, of course, the 9992 line, too many nines, sorry. The 9992 line is going to get everything and eventually it rolls into the safe link gateway as well. So in terms of, uh, of uh, licensing, uh, if you have a risk license, you get tunneling for free. And we're going to charge a little bit of money for the encryption because that's valuable. Uh, here, a little bit, just to make sure that we know, uh, I, I want to stress the point that we are working together with people. Um, back in February, we had a big interrupt event that Cobalt hosted in our Orange County uh, in California. A lot of people showed up for that, and we made sure that all the, uh, um, all the risk main profiles uh, features work between vendors because 
uh, it, it's all fine to get your equipment to work with itself, but um, you want to make sure that uh, it, it works with the, all the other guys too. Uh, and you can see the the results there on the Vitrans. If you look for Vitrans 2020 at YouTube, you, you want to see a clip of that. Um, this was uh, before the virus was uh, was a concern, and, and I'm I'm uh, happy to report that even though there was a lot of people working very close together, see me there, uh, nobody got sick, fortunately. And 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 they were all the bad guys too, right? All the bad guys. Yeah, we had mm -hmm. people, we had people from. <laughs> I, I don't know what bad guys is, but uh, we have all people the from, worst guys. <laughs> We had people from Israel. We had people from Canada, and if you're talking about bad guys, we had we had me from the Bay Area, which is also as bad as the other places. But we. Yeah. Uh, Ciro, Ciro, uh, I have a question for you. Yes. Before you go, um, this uh, risk situation, technology application, whatever it is, uh, it's interesting. What is, what does that mean? You know, reliable internet, stream technology, whatever it is. This is, what is exactly, I mean, I'm sorry to ask you this, but that's what we're here for. What is exactly the correct application for this? This is for the stations or facilities not to lose their main, I would say, uh, a broadcast or the main streaming, you know, uh, a media or something or, or, or path. I don't know. Can okay. you? I, I, let me talk to you about this. There's a number of applications for that. So what the technology do, does for you is to provide a, uh, a low latency, high reliability path over the internet. So uh, it's it, so this is the kind of stuff that you're going to need from facility to facility. You have a, a TV station and a studio, or, or two, or, or a, a, a main TV station and an affiliate and you have to deliver the link from that. Or sometimes you have a reporter in the field that's, that wants to deliver a signal to, to the news desk. So it is high quality, low latency transport of video over the, the internet. In the old days, what would you do if you had two locations you have to, uh, to transmit video from one place to another? You would get the lease line. You got a dedicated channel and then you push it in through that education channel and you, you pay a lot of money. Now with RIST, you don't pay, uh, the, you're gonna save money and you're gonna take, you're not going to take a hit on, on, on latency. So if you want it to be really reliable, we, we also, RIST also supports the notion of seamless switching, just exactly like 2022-7. Uh, you go by a, a link from one ISP, let's say Comcast, you, you take a, you buy a link from another SP, say Verizon, and you send two copies. This is still cheaper than the normal internet link, right? It's still cheaper than buying buying a dedicated line, and you get it over there. But so it's any place where you need a, a video link from point A to point B, and that you can use the internet for lower cost. Okay, good. Thank you. Welcome. Any more questions? It's your chance, guys. We're not going to see you in Las Vegas, um, so it's now. Daniel, somebody, yeah, somebody, had asked, um, somebody had asked if the multi-viewer support TSL tally on the chat box. Um, this, Chris? Yeah, yeah, we do actually. We have, uh, it's too bad that we don't have the... Uh, the a live demo, but we do have that ability. In fact, we just uh, updated that uh, like three weeks ago uh, when I was in Champagne, and we do have an emulator. So if you, if you guys want to see something, if anybody here wants to see that working, uh, we might be able to share with you guys, uh, you know, uh, a link to where you can see that working. But we do support that. Now. So yeah, but if you do want to know more, please send us your uh, your questions and and your comments, and we'll be able to accommodate um, any uh, requests with that. Okay, there is a question from Digital Blue about protocols. Uh, right, and I did, did tell them that I was going to get to them a list uh, of all the protocols that we currently support uh, for the both the multivariate and the router. 
So I'll, I'll get that information to uh, to them. Okay. No more questions. Um, thank you, guys. This is, was amazing. Thank you. Uh, it's a great turnout. Thank you so much. We hope we went slow enough um, to pay attention. You know, and uh, if you have any questions, let us know. But we we recorded the session. We're going to send it to all of you. All of you who attended today are going to get a recorded copy of the session. Um, and uh, we can also send you the PowerPoint separately. Tomorrow we're going to be sending out the PowerPoint. And we are opening up for the next you know couple months to do end user webinars. So we're inviting a lot of our end users um, for dedicated webinars or group webinars. So if you guys have um, various groups of people in your countries or in your in your reach that you would like um, to talk to Cobalt, we'll be happy to um, schedule a webinar, you know, for one end user or multiple or whatever you would like to, to get it done. We'll be happy, happy to do a live session for you. So thank you very much. If you, if you see your business changing the next couple of months, let us know uh, how it's changing. Reach out if you see any project delays or things that you're noticing. We noticed that a couple of uh, truck projects delayed a couple months, but we also noticed that we got a couple of last minute orders on streaming encoders for the obvious reasons, probably now more than ever people working remotely. So just today and yesterday, actually, we got orders for streaming encoders because we see that this is um, going to probably be popular for the next you know, few months as people try to get work done remotely. So you know there's, there's 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 ways we can help people let us know and uh, thank you so much again for today's session and uh, we're here for you let us know thank you for your time and your uh, education okay mm -hmm. all right thank you guys